I meant to do that before this video. There'll be loads of comments like, yeah, it's an ad, so I don't trust you. Allegedly. Oh my God. This setting mist is five pounds. I've got the mascara, the wiggle. Hello everybody, welcome back. We've got some things to talk about. I've got some drugstore makeup to review. And when I say drugstore, some people kind of sometimes shout at me and be like, nobody calls it a drugstore in the UK. Drugstore in general being like the term for affordable makeup. It's just an easier and more well-known way of saying it. I went and had a little browse around Super Dragon Boots the other week and I got loads of new stuff that looks really interesting. So let's just get into it. I'm just gonna put a bit of moisturizer on because my face is feeling a little bit dry. It's all kicking off in the beauty industry at the moment. And I do want to talk about it a little bit. Um, I'm just gonna say now, like I'm not gonna mention the person's name. I'm sure a lot of you have seen what's going on. If you haven't seen what's going on, I'm sure you will find out and a quick Google can, you know, tell you. And I also just want to massively stress that I don't want anybody to go over to this person's pages and send them any hate because I'm sure they've got enough of that already. But in this kind of situation, I just felt like I couldn't like not say anything about it because it really upset me actually. Let's chat while I put some products on. So this is the Milani No Pore Zone Mattifying Primer. I did get sent this in a PR package and I've never tried it before. Ooh, it's like a silicone gel sort of texture. Oh my God, it smells so weird. So there was a creator who did a mascara ad on TikTok and in the ad, after saying that she'd applied two coats of the mascara, it cuts from a clip of her eyelashes looking like, you know, regular lashes with the mascara on to then it cutting to a clip where it really looks like there's been false lash lashes added in that there's like a lash band that can be seen in some angles. There's suddenly like an extra 40 lashes. They look very thin and wispy looking. It just, I'm 99% sure that false lashes Lashes had been applied to the outer corners in a paid ad on social media with millions of views lots of impressionable people trusting this person right um I mean that's definitely that primer has definitely mattified my face but I don't really like the feeling of it it's that kind of slippery silicone feeling that I don't really tend to like in a primer but I mean my face definitely looks mattified it feels very soft but it's just not my favorite kind of feeling of primer and then for my foundation bourgeois is back in the UK they discontinued bourgeois a couple of years ago they've brought it back they had a whole stand of it and the healthy mix foundation is back with more shades they still need an improvement on their shade range but they had more shades than they used to I have got no idea if this is gonna match me um actually I forgot to put instant tan on. I meant to do that before this video. I got the shade 52W and you know what? I used to like the Healthy Mix foundation but I didn't love it because back then my skin was mega oily whereas now I tend to go for a little bit more glowy foundation so I'm really hoping that I'm gonna love this now. Give it a good old shake. Does it still smell like it did? No, you know what? It doesn't. Oh no, wait, it kind of does. It smells different than how it used to, but it has an element of, to me, it used to smell like apricot yogurt, which sounds so random, but it's definitely got less of a scent now, in my opinion. Okay, so I'm gonna say that she allegedly allegedly put on a pair of thick lashes. And I was just really, really disappointed to see that because a lot of people, especially on TikTok, seem to not trust TikTok creators or influencers or beauty creators or content creators, whatever you wanna call them, right? People that make social media posts. A lot of people on TikTok don't tend to trust a lot of people anyway. Oh my God, my nail just fell off. And I've seen before, like when I've posted an ad on TikTok, there'll be loads of comments like, yeah, it's an ad, so I don't trust you. And I'm like, but why would you not trust me when it's an ad? Like just because it's an ad and I'm working with the brand on it, like they're paying me, like for me, personally my own morals I wouldn't just promote anything like any old shit for a check you know what I mean and after posting YouTube videos for the past eight years you learn that in order to be successful you have to be honest and well I guess that's not always the case is it because that it's not that way for everybody but I just think that your reputation with your followers is so much more worthwhile and your reputation with brands even like when you give them constructive criticism on why their products don't work for you they can then take that information and use it to better their products if you just say that everything is amazing that's not really going to help any one. That's just the way that I look at it anyway. So I was so, so disappointed and upset to see that she'd allegedly applied fake lashes. Guys, this foundation is really nice. Let me just zoom you in. Can you see how it's just given such a natural looking glow to my face? It's not super glowy, but it's like a soft sort of radiant glow without looking oily at all. It looks super smooth. It's not got great coverage. Like I would say it's probably like light to medium maybe medium coverage. Like you can still see my little blemishes poking through. We've got some like spot scars down here. But in terms of the finish, especially around my nose, it looks so smooth and it looks like skin. Like it doesn't really look that detectable on my face. So far, I'm a big fan of that. And also the shade match, you know what? It kind of actually does 
much my neck. In Superdrug, they have a new own brand which is called Studio London and they had loads of different things in there and I picked up a few different things that look the most interesting to me. I got one of their concealers. This is the Flaunt Flawless Cream Concealer in the shade 12. The shades were kind of weird, like I swatched loads of them and they were, I don't know, they all seem to be in random orders with the numbers. So this one was 12, but it looks really, really light. We'll give it a try. So just speaking from the heart and speaking from my opinion, when you are a creator or YouTuber, whatever you want to call it, you have a duty of care to your followers, in my opinion, to tell the truth. And like, for example, I remember one time I was on a brand trip, right? And we were on a coach. I was just sat there minding my own business and I was occasionally talking to the people that were sat behind me. But I was just having a moment where I was eating my lunch and they were talking about sponsorships and stuff. And I wasn't like intentionally eavesdropping, but they were talking really loud and I could hear their conversation. And I heard one of them saying how they worked with a tanning brand, but they were like, oh yeah, I'd never actually tried it. I just used, I was just naturally tanned for my holiday. And they'd worked on like a paid post with a tanning brand. And I was just sat there like, one, why would you do that? Two, why are you admitting that so proudly on like a bus full of people? And three, like, what if one of your young followers saves up their pocket money they go and buy that tanning product and it's absolute shit or it gives them a reaction or it's just a bad product okay this concealer is too light for me but it's actually got pretty decent coverage oh crap it's drying really quickly oh no oh my god it's literally like already dried before I've managed to do the other side of my face. It literally dried so quick that these bits are now not blending very easily. It's got really nice coverage, but Jesus Christ, it's really, really light. Oh my God, I'm just turning into a ghost. The thing is, right, I really like the coverage. It's got great coverage, but it just dries so quick. Bear with me while I just blend this out. Um, Yeah, so what if one of your followers goes out and buys it, they've saved up money for it, they've spent their hard earned money from it, and then it's shit or they have a skin reaction or it's just a really bad product. And I fully get that not every everything works for everybody. Like for example, I love the Sky High Mascara, but some people have told me that they hate the Sky High Mascara. And so whenever I'm doing an ad for something, I'm like, okay, it's a product that I personally love and personally use. And then you can make your decision from there whether you wanna go and buy it. I'm never like forcing you to go and buy it. And absolutely everything that I talk about on my channel is you don't, you absolutely do not have to go and buy it. Like if it's an ad, don't buy it because you think that it will be helping me. Just buy something if you think that you like the look of it and you can make your own decisions on that. This one is again by Studio London and it's the Flaunt Flawless Bronzing Cream and I picked up the shade four. They didn't seem to have the lighter shade there but I looked at this one and I was like, hmm, actually maybe it will be too dark, we'll give it a go. What I do wanna say is that there are plenty of creators out there that are honest and they very carefully choose the brands that they work with and the products that they're promoting. And I would say that, you know, 90% of influencers are trustworthy, but there are a good 10% who seem to just promote anything for money. There were some people in the comments of this particular TikTok that's blown up that were defending her and saying, you know what, maybe she had bills to pay and maybe it's the brand that has told her to put on false lashes and it's not her fault. You know, maybe she's in a contract that she couldn't get out of. But in all of those situations, if bills have got to be paid and you know, you need some money, this particular person is a huge TikTok creator and I'm sure we'll have brands throwing themselves at her to work with them. And so in that kind of scenario, pick a brand and a product that you love. And also as well, make sure that you try products before you agree to do a brand deal on them. But even if it is the case where you're either in a multi-contract deal with somebody or you've already signed the contract, I've had situations in the past where I've been in like a year long or like six month long partnership with a brand where like every month or every Every couple of months I would do an ad for them and that's sort of pre-agreed and I've had situations in the past where they've said okay for this month we would love you to do a video using this particular product by the way this bronzer is really nice it's very natural it's not super pigmented but the way that it's going on it's going on really smooth looking it's a lot more natural than I thought it was gonna be and it's kind of like bringing my foundation to match my face a little bit more <laughs> and in those kind of situations where a brand has said oh this month you know we'd love you to talk about this particular product and they've then sent me the product and I've tried it out and I've said, you know what? I just don't like it. I don't want to promote this. And I've got back to the brand and said, I'm really sorry, it just doesn't work for me. Is there any chance that I could swap it out for another product and either talk about something else? Or can I just owe you another piece of content for like the next month? And when something else launches that I've tried and that I like, then I will be happy to talk about it. And they've said, yeah, sure, absolutely. Because I think, you know, the brands don't want you to be promoting something that you don't like because then it comes across badly on camera. And most of these 
brands are run by human beings and I'm sure that they would be understanding. I mean, I don't know, but you know, you would like to think that they would be understanding and most brands would be if you said, look, I'm really sorry. I know that I agreed to do this video, but I've tried it and it just doesn't work for me. Can I owe you a piece of content or can I pick something else to talk about? And then another thing that people were kind of like saying, oh, well, maybe it's the brand that has told her to do that. I'm sorry, but if a brand came to me and said, we want you to promote this mascara and can you please put on a pair of false lashes? I would reply back and be like, no. <laughs> Fuck off. I mean, I wouldn't actually tell them to fuck off, but you know what I mean? Like, I would never, because it's just not worth risking your reputation, in my opinion. So it just was very upsetting to see. And then I'm gonna go in with this, which is, again, Studio London, and it's the Flaunt Flawless Blusher in the shade Inner Glow. Actually, this says it's a cheek and lip pigment, and I'm not gonna lie, under the lights of Superdrug, like those harsh lights, this looked like it was a slightly darker shade, and they didn't have the blushes there to swatch, so I just picked up this one, and it looks really, really light, so I don't know if it's gonna show up, but we'll give it a go. And it was then the fact that she was replying to people's comments saying, um, you know, lots of people in the comments had said, it really looks like you're wearing false lashes. Like we can see the false lash band. How did you gain extra eyelashes? And you know, people were saying, are you wearing false lashes on your outer corners at the end? And then she'd reply back to them saying, no, absolutely not. Um, it's just three to four coats of the mascara, but that's what just baffled me. Cause you can literally see the lashes allegedly in my opinion. Oh my gosh, this is also actually really nice. They had quite a few shades of this as well, but this this one um, was the lightest, I'm pretty sure. The others all looked quite bright and intense, but you know what? I thought it wasn't gonna show up. It definitely has showed up. Oh my God, these products are really nice. And most of the things apart from the foundation were around the five pound mark, so they're really affordable. That's nice. I would like to get a darker shade. We then have the powder. This is the Studio London Flaunt Flawless Setting Powder, weightless and mattifying. They had a translucent one and they also had a banana one, which looked yellow. I mean, yeah, not only does it give a bad name to the brand and to the creator, but also to the industry in general. Like now people are gonna trust creators even less because it was such a huge creator that has done this and you know they trusted her and people are now probably questioning who they can and can't trust which I, is completely understandable and I'm not saying like oh you should trust me but well I mean hopefully you can but what I'm saying is like with the influencers that you follow just I don't know just be wary of their content and I guess don't believe everything that you see on the internet but then also like I do want to tell you to trust people because there are people out there that are trustworthy so it's just a bit of a sticky situation you know and how that got through the checks of the brand I do not know I'm very interested to see if there will be some kind of like statement about it or whether it will just all be like swept under the rug I don't know and to be honest like I'm sure that she is sitting there right now thinking shit what have I done and I'm sure she's getting some horrible messages from people in my post that I did on Instagram about it and the comment on the video Like I tried to keep it respectful in a way of just being like I'm really disappointed to see this You know, I'm sure she's probably got people telling her horrific things right now Which absolutely like she doesn't need and I'm sure she's really regretting her decisions and thinking What have I done and how am I gonna come back from this? So that is obviously sad, but then it's like just don't lie to your followers like end of story just don't do it um this just looks like a white sort of translucent powder so i'm gonna put some in the lid i'm gonna use my primark powder puff oh and the concealer's already creased in that time so yeah i don't really know what else more to say about it to be honest but i did go out and buy the mascara today the crazy thing is it looked like a really nice mascara before she allegedly put on false lashes like it looked nice it looked lengthening and separating like i'm sure it works really well i love L'Oreal mascaras, they work really well for me. I love the original telescopic and this is like a new version of the telescopic so I'm sure it is great but we will sure as hell find out. This powder does actually feel quite lightweight. I think it will have flashback. I will do a test in a sec. Let me just set the rest of my face. And also as well, like I get it. We're all human beings. We all make mistakes and I'm sure she will never make this mistake again and like it's all learning experiences and lots of people go through these kind of things in life and, and you know, learning from your mistakes is a normal part of life but it just sucks like it sucks i think i've said everything i need to say i just wanted to have a bit of a chat about it really because i usually try and stay away from drama um because it scares me but i don't know i just couldn't not say anything about this because i was just like so guided to see it so oh my god another product as well this is the maybelline superstay powder foundation shit i meant to actually use this when i was setting the rest of my face but you know what maybe i can use this to help me match the rest of my face so here's the thing right i did an ad with maybelline for this powder foundation in that ad because it was one that was on tiktok i had loads of people being like yeah it's an ad you're lying yeah show us what it's like in natural light then and show us a wear test and i was like okay so i did <laughs> and i you know responded to that by showing the people what they wanted to see and obviously that i did do a sponsored tiktok with maybelline and a sponsored sort of like ad campaign with them this video is not sponsored but i do just want to 
to show you the coverage of this foundation. So I've got the shades 10 and the shade 05. Wait, where did my 03 shade go? Well, I mean, I'm probably just going to use the shade 10 today. I'm just going to dip into a little bit of this. And I don't know if you can see, like, I've got a couple spots down here. Is this not going to be too dark? Oh, crap. Yeah, that's too dark, isn't it? Oh, no. Why am I pulling such an unflattering face? You can obviously put this all over your face. And some people asking on TikTok, like, oh... Would you recommend it for dry skin? If you have dry skin, you would obviously need to moisturize underneath this. Like, don't just put it on your bare face because it's a, like at the end of the day, it's a powder. This, I would say, is very comparable to the MAC Studio Fix Foundation, which I carry around with me in my handbag. And my favorite way to use powder foundations is to take some on a brush. I mean, obviously. Well, you can use a sponge. And add it onto any areas where I need a little bit more coverage like especially spots if i've got a spot that's poking through i kind of wish that i had a more obvious spot i didn't get any powder bronzers or powder blush or powder highlighter because i don't know i was just having a look around and i was like nothing's really tickling my fancy that was anything new that i haven't tried before so i'm going to take this which is the milani bronzer in 09 dolce it was kind of the same with the eyeshadow palettes like i was looking in superdrug and just nothing was really jumping out at me you know and then for my blush, I'm going to use this one by Kiko, which is the from the Powerful Love Collection. I did go into London the other day, and I went to the Kiko Regent Street store to film a bit of content with Kiko. And I got some of the new collection, which very cute packaging. And this is like a little blush and highlighter duo. A little bit of that blush. And then the highlighter. Oh, that was a bit much. Oh, this is so stunning. So pretty. This highlighter is super pigmented, so you only need a tiny bit. <laughs> I say that having just drowned my cheeks in it. For my eyebrows, again, I got some of these Studio London brow products. These are the Brow Boss 24 hour brow pens, which sounded very exciting to me because I love a brow pen, but I got two shades because they didn't have any that I could swatch. I got gray, brown and chocolate. I'm hoping this is gonna be like the NYX brow pen that I love. No. Oh, I thought it was gonna be like a felt tip brow pen, but it's like one of those, um, it looks, it looks, oh, oops. It does look pretty liquidy, so we'll give it a shot. But usually with these type of like microblading type brow pens, they tend to get clogged up really easily and the ink doesn't come out of them that well. I've gone with grey brown, by the way, because it looked like it was going to be a good shade. Pretty good. Oh, look, then see as soon as you try and do it on the other side. I just find that these types of pens seem to stop working as soon as they touch your foundation, which is fine if you do your foundation after your eyebrows, but I always do my foundation first. You see, then it just dries up a little bit. Even if I keep squeezing it. It looks really nice in my eyebrows, actually. I like the color, but it just dries up a little bit quick. But that always happens with these type of brow pens on me. Whereas the NYX one is sort of like a bristle brush pen, so it has ink flow constantly. Yeah, I just can't get much to come out of it anymore. On my eyes, I'm gonna keep it relatively simple. I don't wanna do anything too heavy because I want you to be able to see the mascara. But I'm gonna test this, which is the Sarah New SFX palette with Revolution, which was completely designed by her. It's the Shape Shifter Shadow Palette, which looks like this. It looks pretty cool. I think I'm gonna go for something purple today just because the Taylor Swift Lavender Haze music video is coming out and uh, I fancy doing a bit of purple. So I'm gonna take the purple shade which is called Celestial and I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of the shade Casper which is the white. Let me just blend back out my concealer. I'm just gonna dip into the Celestial color first. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of that on my inner outer corners, not my inner corners. So I'm just placing a little bit of that down first then i'm gonna go in with the white shade and just sort of blend over this because i want it to be a slightly lighter lilac-y color and you see i'm just going back in and doing like really small little circles to blend out the edges of this and i think for my eyeshadow you know what i've noticed guys i'm starting to like my oils are starting to come through already so i feel like maybe that's the powder because the foundation wasn't overly glowy was it so i doubt that it would have got oily in the past hour that i've sat here those shades have actually blended together really nicely i have a little vision because i saw okay on on the palette and because it was called celestial there's these little like little like glittery bits and then i have some of them on my sweatshirt and i think i'm gonna do something sort of celestial themed on my eyes with some liner but i'm just gonna take this shade which is called divine which is the only shimmer in the palette i'm just gonna put some of that on the inner part of my eye just like a wash of shimmer and that is exactly what I was after, just like a wash of shimmer over the top. 
And then for my liner, I'm gonna take her, the same girl, Sarah New SFX, the Transition Hydra Paint Palette, which looks like this. How cool does that look? And I believe these are like, it doesn't actually give instructions. It says it's face paint on the back, but I think I just need to like spritz them with a little bit of water. Let me just give it a spritz. And I wanna take the lilac color. And this is actually one of the brushes from the Glisten Cosmetics and May Tami collection. As soon as I dip my brush in there, it's kind of changed color a little bit. This is the first time I've done this kind of eyeliner shape and I'm not sure what I've attempted to do in this video because it's really hard to get them even. <laughs> Kind of weird looking, kind of cool. I'm then gonna take the white shade from this palette and I might also take this darker purple as well. And I'm just gonna do some little stars. Let's take, oh, let's take that purple. And then let's do a couple of little like white dots. I mean, it's very random, but I kind of love it. So the setting sprays from Studio London were five pounds each, so I got both of them. And I'm gonna try one today and I'll try one in another video. I think today I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try the matte one, just because I'm looking a little bit glowy. I wanna see if this does mattify my face or whether it just says that it will mattify my face. And as always, we will do a little test to see if it's trustworthy. So let me just do a swatch of that purple eyeshadow. I feel like the black is always a good indication on whether something is gonna smudge or not. I think the packaging is really cute. Oh. Ooh, it's not too intense. Just spraying that onto my arm there. In the meantime. Mm. Okay, no, it is actually quite a strong mist. I sprayed too much. In the meantime, let me just do my lips. I've got the Studio London Power Pout 12 Hour Precision Lip Liner in the shade Superior Latte. I like the sound of that name. Let's give this a go. Guys, if anything, that setting mist has given me more of a glow than maybe matte. <laughs> That's a nice lip liner. I like it. It was only a couple pounds. And then I'm gonna take this, which is, again, from the same Kiko Powerful Love Collection. This is the Duo Lip Gloss, Duo Lip Color and Gloss in the shade 02. So it's got like a lipstick that's very pointy on one side. Doesn't really smell of anything either. And then it's got the gloss on the other side. That also doesn't really smell of anything. I'm kind of scared that I'm gonna snap it. <laughs> gonna wind it all the way down. Oh. That color actually matches with the lip liner really nicely. And then let's take the gloss on the other side. Mm -hmm. mm. That gloss is also really nice. Now that I, this is dried, let's do a little. Woohoo! That's not going anywhere. This setting mist is five pounds and it will actually keep your makeup in place. Very impressive. I've got the mascara. This is the L'Oreal Telescopic Lift Mascara. It was the mascara from the ad. You know what? This supposedly doesn't come out until February in the UK, but I think that might just be online because I went to order it online yesterday and nowhere had it in stock. And on Amazon, it said it would be delivered in February. So I was like, oh, well that sucks. And then I went onto Superdrug's website and it had it on there, uh, but it was only available for store collection. And I was thinking that must be some kind of glitch, like if it's not out yet. And so I went along to one of my local Superdrug's where supposedly this was in stock and it was there on the shelf. It was 12.99, I did get a pound off because of my super drug points, which always comes in handy. And this is the very talked about mascara. And this is the brush. So it's kind of like the original L'Oreal Telescopic brush, but just bigger. Because the original L'Oreal Telescopic brush is very thin and it's got a flat side and the bristly side. And I've got to say, as soon as I got home, I just went and put a coat of this on my lashes because I was like, I need to see it immediately. And so let me just show you. Let me zoom all the way in. I've got to say, I love the original L'Oreal Telescopic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the flat side. I completely get that it's not for everyone because it does sort of like put on quite a lot of product. And then you have to use the other side of the brush to comb through. But I'm just gonna wiggle that there for a sec and then pull up through my lashes. I'm gonna wiggle and then pull up through, wiggle and then push upwards. And I'm looking down into a mirror so that I don't get it all over my eyelid. So, let me just comb out the little clumps. So this is after one dip and like one sort of wiggling application. I'm gonna go in with a second. I'm not gonna cut it. So I might speed it up, but I'm not gonna cut it. So you can see exactly how it's working. It is a little bit messier than the original because the brush is a little bit bigger. And it can get a little bit clumpy, but you just use then the other side of the comb to sort of brush out the clumps. 
The thing that is so sad is that it's actually a really good mascara and it works really well on my lashes. It's really lengthened them and given them volume and lifted them up. Like that's it from the front view. And then if I do like a side view, you can see the length there and like the curl that it's given to my lashes. If I just point my lights at me so you can see the lashes even more. And just for the sake of the video, I'm gonna go in with a third coat. You know what? I can see how this mascara wouldn't quite be for everybody. If you go a bit heavy handed with it, it can get a little bit clumpy, but then you can sort of use the other side of the brush to comb out the clumps. So I can see myself, holy shit, it's actually building really nicely. The brush is a little bit spiky though, I'm not gonna lie, like it's a little bit painful because it's a plastic bristle brush oh my god it is building really nicely this mascara look isn't for everybody some people find this too clumpy some people find it too sort of like spidery looking but it's actually a really really good mascara no false lashes are needed i mean it's actually it's gone a bit clumpy at the ends so i'm just going to pinch off the clumps and then go back in with the comb side of the brush so that's the side with it on and this is the side without. Because my lashes are naturally invisible, it does obviously look like quite a stark difference, but it is a really nice mascara. It's nice, no false lashes needed. I've got my little tripod here. I'm just gonna film a TikTok of me doing the second eye, and then I'll be right back with both eyes done. But as you can see, it works well. Okay, so let me just check. Are my lashes looking even? Because sometimes when I do one eye first and then the other, they look a bit uneven. It doesn't need the falsies to sell it, in my opinion. I will definitely keep using that again. You know what? Overall, this has been a pretty positive experience. Some of that Studio London stuff I'm really impressed with. The thing I forgot to do is a flashback test. I will be right back. There wasn't a crazy amount of flashback. There is a little bit from what I can see. My face in the pictures does look a little bit more washed out, but it's really not too bad. It doesn't look like you've like chucked flour on your face, you know, which is great. Probably wouldn't wear it in flash photos for that reason, but it looks pretty nice on camera actually. So that is it from me. I am gonna try my best to edit this video and get it up today on the day that I'm filming this. I've been sat here for way too long. I don't know why this video has taken me about three hours to film, but I'm pretty happy with the overall look. And there are some products here that I will 100% be using again. The Bourjois Healthy Mix Foundation. I can see myself using that all the time now. So I'm gonna leave this here. I hope you guys are all doing good. I would love to know your thoughts on stuff in the comments down below and I just want to say like there are still honest creators out there and I just want to say from my point of view I promise you I will never ever take an ad for a product that I don't love and would not recommend to my friends and family and to you guys what I would always recommend you to do is do your own research, like look at different people's reviews of a product, look at their skin type versus your skin type. Maybe if you can go into store and swatch the product if you can, or like have a closer look at it. Don't believe everything that you see on the internet. It's, it's a bit of a minefield out there, to be honest. I hope this video was helpful. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe. I would love to have you and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.